Hello everybody, welcome back to Vampire. Last time we left off, we defeated William and then we became the adopter. So let's check some stuff, we'll talk to some people and other stuff, blah blah blah. Dear Jonathan, I asked Nurse Crane to secure an office for you on the second floor. Please forgive the assorted decoration, but Pembroke Hospital is not exactly the rates. Sorry to let you discover your office alone, but I need to sleep a little before going back to work. I'm just a mere mortal. After all, I also give orders to let you rest. And for the staff to never enter your room, you will be able to sleep all day without being disturbed and work at night without raising any suspicions. I'm afraid the place is quite messy, but you'll be able to conduct your experiments here at your own pace. You also notice there is an open window with a scaffolding that will allow you to enter or exit the hospital without being noticed. I imagine how awful, new, and disturbing this all must be for you. Believe me, I have studied enough of your species to understand what you must now be facing a feeling. Be assured, I'll do whatever I can to help you in this ordeal. Now that you're not completely alone facing it, I'm glad I met you. These dark times we are all presently facing, I hope our future collaboration will yield great results. Welcome to the Pembroke, my esteemed colleague. We shall talk soon. Your sincerely, Edgar Griffin Swanse. P.S. I left a copy of some of my notes concerning what I have discovered econ in the last few years feel free to read about it if you need some guidance as long as you don't use this knowledge to take advantage of me <laughs> well thank you mr swanson i shall read those notes because this game is all about reading article on econs it is a rare opportunity and almost a privilege to approach an, a vampire to observe their most intriguing physical and psychological traits with a scientific and rational eye. Here are some of the most fascinating abilities I personally observed over the last 10 years while interviewing a few vampires or econ, as they prefer to call themselves. Supernatural speed. A vampire can act and move like a mortal in all his actions, but the trained eye will spot that they have the keenest sense and can react quicker than any mortal. On a few occasions, alarm, surprise, necessi necessity to flee. I have seen a vampire move so quickly. It, also, it is almost as if he had vanished just to reappear somewhere else. The human eye cannot follow their movement when they act so quickly. But it is not a teleport that the materialization. It is only a supernatural speed. For me, it is a cat-like attribute which allows them to run, dodge, or jump longer and faster than us. I also noticed that such speed to exhaust them seems to exhaust them and that they are bound to physical limitations. What is he talking? Blood awareness. I feel like he's talking. This may be the most cast, cast, catastrophic ability of all concerning vampires since it is the cause of many, so many tragedies of them and us. Vampires crave for blood. They must use their will to restrain themselves from fr frenziedly drinking every drop of blood they can see. They need blood to function and to express the full supernatural traits. A famished vampire can be very weak, even if he cannot die of hunger or thirst. This urge, this need for blood, may explain why a vampire is so aroused by it. A vampire confessed to me that the blood that blood could sometimes blind him, since its smells and attractiveness can be so strong. When he focuses, a vampire can almost see blood all around him, inside warm bodies, through walls, on a sup supposedly clean weapon, so on. The same vampire even told me that he can see if a mortal has clean blood or is ill, and that in some cases, he can even see, sense diseases, infected clothes, or even items in a room. If this is true, it could have so many med medical applications, it must almost beggars belief. Okay. Is this all? Okay. Dr. Swanse. Okay, so first, I think I want to talk to everybody in the hospital. Shillings. We got more shillings. Nope. 
Okay, where's everybody? Okay, uh, unknown. Unknown. Oh no. Who's that? Unknown. Okay, let's talk to all the unknown for now. The hell is the guy? Okay. Okay, who's the closest? You gotta go downstairs. Oh. Five. Oh, they were talking downstairs. Ooh. Okay, new weapon. Hawksaw. Somebody upstairs? Nobody upstairs? Okay, so we gotta get to know everybody in this hospital first. Anybody in here? Okay, let's talk to her. Good evening, nurse. Good evening, doctor. I don't think we've been introduced yet. My name is Pippa Hawkins. And Ooh. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. Dr. Swansea has recently offered me a position in this hospital. Well, it's a euphemism that your help will be appreciated, doctor. Thank you. How is the situation here? How would you describe the situation at the Pembroke Hospital? It's serious. The flu is wreaking havoc amongst the staff and patients. Oh no. We are running out of everything. Should be wearing a mask then. Get a grip. What? Spanish flu won't last forever. It won't. Nurse Hawkins, the Spanish flu won't last forever. Even the Black Plague didn't kill everyone. Well, I wish I could believe you. But what if this epidemic was worse? Nothing lasts forever. What if forever. in the end? Nobody was spared. Masud, uh, you must get a hold of yourself, nurse. <sighs> Sorry, I'm exhausted. No one has any idea when this epidemic will be over. <laughs> yep, you're talking to me personally. Corona. How long have you been a nurse? Well, long enough to see that the epidemic is winning. And no matter how qualified you are, don't tell me you'll change that. You would be surprised. You are right. You'd be surprised what dedication can achieve, Nurse Hawkins. In medicine, sometimes we're just a test result away from a miracle. <sighs> Sorry, Doctor. I, I don't want to sound bitter, but I'm just too tired to give a pep talk like Nurse Brannigan. How is the Pembroke staff? coping with the epidemic. Well, not well. Milton, the ambulance driver, is even more grumpy than usual, especially concerning doctors. Oh. Why is Milton grumpy on a daily basis? Is it just an act? Milton's not the kind of man who's bothered about a bad reputation, whether he deserved it or not. Oh, okay. We learned something new about Milton. This is fun. Why does Milton dislike doctors? I don't know. Just ask him. But be warned, Milton is not the chatty type. Okay. okay thank you, miss. That's just that. Personal question. Nope, I gotta find more hint about her. Goodbye, Nurse Hawkins. Thank you for talking to me. On every street corner. The daily routine. Suck this guy. Maybe we'll get another we'll get side quest. Can I help you? Unless you're here to fix my face. No. What's wrong with your face? I don't think you can help me. I'm Dr. Reed. I've recently taken the position of head surgeon here. War injuries. What's wrong with his face? You guessed right, Nothing's Doctor. wrong with his face. German shell took my pretty little mug right off. Smug. But they still call me Thomas Elwood. Smug? What the hell is he talking about? He has no eyebrows, that's all. Oh, okay. He got burnt face. Okay, I see. Left side is burnt. How is your stay with us, Mr. Elwood? Oh, it's bliss. I just escaped death in the trenches to be surrounded again by the moans of the dying. Can I ask you precisely why you're a patient here? It's the pain, sir. The drugs don't work. Oh. It just hurts under the scars. If you get my drift. Oh. Is that who's treating first? Who is treating you? Is someone in particular looking after your case? Nobody since the old and tired doctor spoke to me. Started to think I was forgotten about. 
will blame you. You don't seem worried by that. My face hurts so much more when I smile or cry. Oh. I've learned it's easier not to speak. But be assured I'm smiling inside. That's nice. I'm crying I inside. For your pain. Nurses gave me a bunch of pills. No effect. Told you. It's like the flames are under my skin, burning away. Oh, is there flesh eater? Something eating his flesh? How is your still? There's no question. Oh, we did learn something about Miss Croft. How close are you to Miss Hawcroft? Are you aware that she thinks she is a vampire? To wait for her next nibble is the best reason to stay here. Every <laughs> time she approaches my bed, she treats me like something tasty. A normal person. Aren't you afraid? She may hurt you if the game goes too far. She's quite harmless, I can assure you. Her head's broken inside, is all. Her arm busted on the outside. Oh. But she's still beautiful. Oh, damn. Living proof that there's hope for me. Ooh, I see you like her, huh? So do you let her bite you? You know that's not sanitary. And why not? She's only supping a few drops of me blood. Was she actually drinking your blood? It's real for once. She could decide to bite less willing patients. Then it's another good reason for me to stay here, Doctor. You do realize she's mentally disturbed. It's called the Kotar Syndrome. She truly believes she's a vampire. In her madness, she never refers to my scars. And frankly, if I could, I'd join her world. Oh, damn. It seems much more fun than the real one. Yeah, I get your pain, amigo. Where were you stationed, sir? Did you serve for long? I really don't want to talk about all this shit. No offense. I was pushing too much. I served in France myself. I just wanted to know what happened to you. You were an officer, weren't you? Yep, I was. Then I doubt we fought the same war, sir. No offense. None taken. Okay, so I gotta ask more about him. Find out more about him. Now, Mr. Elwood. We'll talk again. Damn. Who is this guy? Oh, is this idiot? Dude, that almost killed me. Let me talk to you. Good evening, Mr. Hampton. How do you oh, feel? Oh, no, it's the, it is Mr. Hampton. Oh, sorry, I must apologize. That was the guy that stabbed all the dude. Mean? I was not myself in the factory. Fear and exhaustion make me say awful things to you, I'm afraid. You remained perfectly nice and polite. Yeah, you were a little delirious, perhaps. You're polite, my guy. But who wouldn't be after enduring an abduction? abduction? Thank you, Doctor. That's a relief. Now all I need to do is rest and return to my flock. Your flock. How did you end up in William Bishop's den? I had received alarming news about his recent behavior. I went to his place and he refused to let me go. Why did he abduct you? William was an alcoholic. His addiction suddenly changed to blood. I don't oh. know why. Just like a patient I met here. This Miss Hawcroft. <laughs> yep. You dared to enter this awful place alone. You're a hero, Mr. Hampton. Or a fool. I'm just a man trying to help his friends, Dr. Reed. I understand. William Bishop was a conflicted soul, searching for light. I understand you, buddy. About Tom Watts. Do you know Tom Watts, the bartender from the Turtle? I met him before I found you in the canning factory. Tom? Yes, of course. Always the helping hand, good old Tom. Without men like him, corruption and despair would have wiped out the East End long ago. Really? People are still in despair. How could it be otherwise? The authorities have left us all to rot in this contagious nightmare. No drugs, no advice, nothing. It's a damn shame. Okay, this entire episode is going to be me talking to people, so that's Who that. Who should I avoid in this part of town, then? Any particularly evil figures? Not really. Most men and women are just doing their best. And it's not my habit to speak ill of people I know, Doctor. Okay. 
Okay. I understand. What is the general situation in the East End docks? The situation has always been tough. I need to learn every information I can about this. About everyone. The wet boot boys are very nervous since they lost their leader. Oh. Who leads the gang now? Since Clay Cox went missing, it's his wife Edwina who runs the show. With the assistance of her minion, Booth Digby. Oh, okay. Good information. Has the gang been threatening you? Ah, no. I've had this nickname for so long, you know, the sad saint of the East End. No one dares to bug a saint, not even criminals. Yep. Wait, he's a saint? Oh, so he did something. What do you do for a living, Mr. Hampton? I can't help but notice the cross around your neck. I manage a night asylum for the poor and homeless of the docks. Ooh. And I try to guide the lost and hesitant on the right path to our Lord. Okay. Are you a priest, Mr. Hampton? A deacon, maybe? Not at all, Doctor. I'm just a man of faith willing to preach the good word. Why didn't you use your cross against William Bishop? To repel him somehow? That's a very strange question, Doctor. A cross is no magical token, if that's what you were trying to say. Not mine, anyway. Oh, so there's certain cross that can repel monsters. Okay, the mythology. How do you feel, Mr. Hampton? That was any Medically cross. Speaking, I, mean. I feel exhausted. Beyond exhaustion, actually. William drank so much of my blood in his madness. I feel empty. You're oh, in no. good hands here. Dr. Swansea is well versed in blood transfusion, and I'm sure he'll take the best care of you. Thank you, sir. I believe all I need is rest, and then I can go back to the people who need me. So we gotta watch out for the little Miss who thinks she's a vampire and drinking arrived. people's blood. Not really, but I recognize Miss Harriet Jones. I knew her when she lived by the docks. That poor woman had such a miserable life. You never came to see her here at Pembroke. Receiving visits when sick can be an important part of the healing process, you know. We're not just bodies. You're preaching to the converted now, Doctor. To be truly honest, I thought she was dead. She left the docks many months ago. Okay. okay I guess that was all. We'll talk again later. Okay. So what's next? Okay, we got unknown over there. Where we talked to Little Miss over there. Doctor Eggers wants it. Where we talked to him. Thompson. Where we talked to you. Unknown. This Little Miss vampire. Drinking people's blood. What the hell's wrong with you? Dorothy, unknown. Ah, yo, let's stop, let's stop. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I believe we're going to be colleagues. Reed? Yes, I've been informed about your arrival. I'm Waverly Aykroyd. Welcome aboard, I suppose. Does my arrival inconvenience you in some way, Dr. Aykroyd? Let us just say that I don't particularly share Dr. Swansea's enthusiasm for hiring you. What oh, we damn. need here are reliable professionals, not overrated dabblers. Okay. Speak your opinion. Be open. If you have a problem with me, Dr. Aykroyd, please feel free to tell me. Dr. Swansea has imposed your presence on this hospital without asking anyone's advice. The benefit of his position. But I don't agree with it. I know we've never met before. But I believe this hospital could use all the help it can get. You will agree with that, I'm sure. Oh, but I have heard about you, Dr. Reed. Of course, you can't say the same about me, since I have not wasted my time courting the press. Oh, dude, don't just... No need to immodesty. Don't be jealous, Aren't dude. you too old for such jealousy? It really won't do you any good, you know. Don't be ridiculous, Dr. Reed. A simple glance is enough for me to know you have nothing for me to envy. Oh, damn. Okay. Since your tenure in this hospital is longer than mine, perhaps you can tell me more about this place. Let's just say I'm tired of the carelessness around me. I have always respected the skills of Dr. Swansea, but over time, his enthusiasm has become... Displaced. Carelessness? Exactly what are you talking about? We're here to save lives. 
The people who trust us are not volunteering for experimentation. They're here to be healed. I don't intend to run any radical experiments. This guy doesn't like us. Even if I, as any good practitioner should, express an interest in pushing the boundaries of medical research. Modern medical methods were created through audacity and ego. But there are rules in our line of work, and they're here to protect our patients. I don't like this guy. He doesn't like us. Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. Okay, there's a doctor out there. There's a patient here. They'll tell me over there. Well, what, what is she doing over there? Unknown. My sweet girl. What can I do for you, doctor? Oh no, I don't need to talk to you. Thank you, Nurse Crane. Sorry, Nurse Crane. Bye bye. Gonna talk to this patient. patient. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. May I help you? I don't know if a third opinion is needed. Your colleagues are already arguing about my condition. I see. Would you mind telling me more about your situation? I'm Harvey Fiddick. All I want is to get me bloody arm fixed properly. Oh, his arm. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Fiddick. I'm just a regular guy waiting to get his arm fixed, so I can return to work and to my family. I was more curious about what you were doing before being hospitalized. I'm a carpenter, and a good one too. But that means I need both arms to feed my family, Dr. Reed. Okay. Tell me about the doctors who are arguing about your case. Strickland and Ackroyd. Oh. They both want the best for me, but there's a lot of pride there. Doctors are no different from carpenters, it seems. What do you mean? I often had professional arguments with rivals on a building site. Difference is, I disagreed about wooden nails, not flesh and bones. Okay. Are you satisfied with your treatment here? Well, it's clear that I've chosen a bad time to be injured. Forgive my bluntness, but you seem overwhelmed by cases of the flu. I won't lie to you about it. I'm afraid we are. Are you sure you don't want to operate yourself, Dr. Reed? I have the feeling you're very capable. And your colleagues seem to think so too. In other circumstances, you would be right. But for now, I don't think I can take on the responsibility. My apologies. No. Personal question. We know nothing about you, so we can ask anything personal. Okay, goodbye, goodbye now, amigo. I'll see you later. I'll talk to you later once I know Moa. Where's everybody? Dorothy is there. Unknown is there. Well, I'll talk to everybody. Know their names. Unknown. Who are you? Ooh, this is lady. Good evening, madam. Can I help you? It's my son who needs you, sir. Oh. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. How can I help your son? I'm Beatrice Goswick, mother of Mortimer Goswick. Okay. Could you check on him, please, Dr. Reed? I've heard much of your talents as a physician. Your life in London? Yep. And require to tell me about yourself. What can you tell me about yourself, Mrs. Goswick? Not much to say. Just take care of my Mortimer and I'll cover all the expenses. That's all that matters. Okay, she's being our secret secret. Are you really that rich? Most of the patients here are of a more humble origin, if I may say so. Yes. Thanks to my husband. May he rest in peace. I can cover any needed medical expenses. Oh, okay. Husband's may dead. May I ask if you have an occupation, Mrs. Goswick? I'm a teacher by profession. I teach young women who are more ambitious about their futures than their families. Than their families? Okay. Oh. Ambitions about the future. What do you think of your reception here? Any complaints? I have had the uttermost reservations about this hospital since we arrived. But we had no other choice, considering the state of emergency. Is there something in particular? Okay, learn something new. Some of the staff were not especially welcoming. I suspect they're not accustomed to dealing with patients of such social standing. Okay. Tell me more about your arrival at the Pembroke Hospital. What gave you such a bad first impression? The ambulance driver was quite rude. Okay. At the start. 
and that nurse I can, uh, I understand that. seems to have quite a dubious attitude. What do you mean? She managed to secure a bed for my son despite the epidemic. It was a relief, but it wasn't cheap. Oh, she charged you? She charged you for a bed? Yes, and I paid without question considering the urgency of the situation. Oh. I share your concern, Mrs. Goswick. Be sure that I'll talk to the people involved. I don't expect compensation, Dr. Reed. But I'm aware such behavior would not be tolerated in other hospitals. She... wait. Goodbye, Mrs. Goswick. Okay, that was something you learned. Good evening. I'm Dr. Reed. Can I help at all? No. Really? Why are you here, then? I don't want to talk. My throat hurts too much. I oh. suppose that this pain is the reason you're here. Is someone taking care of you? Yes. And no. Could you oh. at least tell me your name, sir? Mortimer. Mortimer Goswick. Oh, so they just put him here? Did I have a tinker of him? Come on. How painful is your throat, Mr. Goswick? So painful I'd rather not talk at all, Doctor. I'll let you get some rest. I'm sure you realize a doctor and his patient have to communicate, sir. Would it help if I gave you some paper and a pen? Not really. I see. Then maybe it's not just your throat that hurts, Mr. Goswick. Perhaps your sore throat is just the consequence of something more hurtful. Yes, maybe. But I don't want to talk or even write about it now. Oh. Okay. Why did your mother have you hospitalized here? She did something. She seems convinced this is a bad hospital. My mother just wants the best for me. She won't rest while I'm here. She'd go all the way to hell and back to help me. Is your mother bothering you? As your doctor, I can ask her to leave you alone if you would prefer. That's tempting, doctor. But you have no idea what my mother is capable of. She would tie herself to my bed if you asked her to leave. Oh. Pembroke Hospital may look unorthodox, but rest assured you're in good hands here. It's not me you have to convince, Dr. Reed. It's my mother. Okay. okay so we got unlocked the other hint, and that's... I have to go now, sir. But don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. Fatigue. Oh, he's su suffering from fatigue. We got Milton over there who is rude. Well, let's talk to him. Maybe we can tell him to go to Good sleep. Good evening, Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. I have to go now, sir. But don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. Okay. Dorothy Crane. Wait, Dorothy was the one that charged her, charged her right? Stop what Dorothy. can I do for you, Doctor? Uh, I was Mr. Hampton, blah, blah, blah. Thank you, Nurse Crane. Dr. Waverly. Oh, we gotta talk to this guy. Good I evening, think Doctor. Dorothy was the one that tried I believe you. we're going to be working together. Dr. Reed. Dr. Swansea informed us of your arrival, but I could not dare to believe we'd have such good fortune. Such an honor, sir. <laughs> Thank you. And you, you are? are? I am Thoreau Strickland. Dr. Thoreau Strickland. I'm a great admirer of your work, Dr. Reed. Okay, your life in London. Accurate averse in the modern methods. Please, could you tell me something about yourself? Let's learn I'm a about great first. admirer of your work concerning blood transfusion, Dr. Reed. I run my own experiments. I'm convinced it's the future. Experiment? Is that what he was talking about? What made you choose to be a doctor? I'm not ashamed to admit you and your work have inspired me. <laughs> I am honored to have the opportunity to work by your side. I'll be glad to help you. Sure, this is awesome. Flora is useless. 
It's always a pleasure to I'm share gonna be nice to everybody. medical knowledge with someone eager to learn. I'll be glad to help you if I can. This epidemic may be the century's most terrible disaster, but I'm convinced that we, as doctors, are the only ones able to defeat it. I based my technique on my mentor's research. He helped me perfect my method. What is yours? I'd rather not talk about it. For now, it's just theories and first approach. Okay. My process is purely experimental and unsuccessful. As long as you're cautious and methodical, you may remain empty-handed, but you won't fail. You're not the first one to warn me, but I am convinced knowledge is the main weapon against the ravages of this epidemic. Okay. About Pembroke Hospital. What can you tell me about the Pembroke? Well, it has always been an honor to work with Dr. Swansea. But with your arrival, I can't think of a better opportunity to learn about blood transfusion. You seem quite optimistic. It's a rare and precious attitude in these difficult times. I'm convinced that this epidemic is a test. A test of endurance and dedication for us men of science. Questions remain about our capacity to resolve the situation. True, true. Last summer, during the first wave of the epidemic, I used to joke with Milton about the extra work. Milton. We're not smiling now. Oh, so he was friend with Milton. Do you need help with anything in particular? Well, yes, maybe. I'm waiting for a batch of products I ordered for my personal research. Quest! Yet my supplier seems to have vanished. Do you want me to play the errand boy for you? Oh no, Dr. Reed. But if you went personally to his shop, what with your reputation and all, he wouldn't dare to refuse the products I need. I see. Well, give me the address, for I may pass by if I have time. Okay. Missing ingredients. New investigation. Local investigation. A new citizen investigation available. Press to open the local investigation menu. Citizen investigation are displayed here. Categorized by district. You can start a new citizen quest by tracking it with square then access your map to locate the area to explore okay tig so i can make something treat treat them okay what do you think of dr Ackroyd's aversion to modern medical methods it's a shame he's so narrow-minded dr swansea taught me that science is about exploring uncharted territory i'm convinced that's true with the influenza and all that's going on you should put your differences aside, don't you think? Why is it so difficult to work together? I believe that if Dr. Ackroyd had been the one to discover the transfusion process, he would be the first to recommend its use. So you believe it's oh. just a question of jealousy and pride? Dr. Ackroyd is as proud as he is blinded by his obsolete concept of medical science. Yep, he is one jealous bastard. Goodbye, okay. Dr. Strickland. Okay, who do I need to talk to about the money thingy? Oh. Thelma Howcroft said she was being watched by vampire hunters. Where are they hiding? I should investigate. We'll investigate later. Good evening. I'm Dr. Reed. Always a pleasure to meet a colleague, sir. Especially when he was supposedly dead. A colleague? Are you a doctor, too? Not anymore, sir. I used to be Dr. Rakesh Chadana. Now, I'm just Mr. Chadana, pawnbroker and humble guardian of this morgue. What do you mean, oh. you used to be a doctor? Was your license revoked? No, sir. It is just that I like to be precise. I run a little pawn shop while taking care of the dead. But I used to be a real doctor. What? Wait, are you selling people stuff? Are you afraid or uneasy being surrounded by so many corpses? Why should I? These bodies are empty vessels. Flesh left to decay. Poof. No soul anymore. All oh, gone. gone. An interesting point of view. 
And quite an exotic one, too. Most people fear, or at least have a respect, for dead flesh. Sir, as a medic during the war, I learned to face my death and the death of others. It's the pain we have to tame, not death itself. Okay. How did you get this job? After I left the army, I worked as an undertaker down by the docks. A dangerous place with many an unpleasant business there. Milton Hooks helped me get a job here. Of course, Milton. Have we met before? I don't think so, sir. Why? When we first talked, you said you were glad to meet me since I was reported dead. A funny yeah. story, sir. Your sister came here a few nights ago. Oh, no. You were missing, and she was looking for your body. She must be very relieved now. Yeah, she's dead. <laughs> she's dead. She is relieved. Do you work here alone? Yes, very easy work, sir. All I have to do is watch a few bodies. The situation was very different when the main walk was still open. Why do you have to watch these bodies? Because these poor fellows have no names. We keep them in case someone comes looking for the missing. Oh. Sadly, very rarely happens. Okay. Why that's close sad. the hospital's main morgue? It was for sanitary reasons after the beginning of the epidemic. Cadavers had to be moved to the nearest mass grave. Cadavers. Personal question. A pawnbroker. I expect you get all types of people here. Yes, sir. All kind of people. For I sell all kind of goods. Okay, who comes to trade? Who comes here to trade with you? It's very unhygienic, even unsafe. Diseases can spread. For the customers, for the hospital. I'm very cautious, sir. I've been a doctor, remember? And all my clients are good people. In fact, I think I only know good people. Okay. What kind of goods? With the quarantine, it's not always easy to buy things. So I trade, I exchange. Some people sell, some others buy. I like to help. to help. Okay. Since you're not afraid of dying, do you believe in life after death, Rakesh? No. I believe we must do all the good we can while alive. For our time is short, and the obstacles are endless. Do you think you would enjoy immortality as a concept? I don't think so. Don't mistake me. I love life, and I'd like to live a long life. But everything has to decay, okay. sir. Even, Even good goodwill. Will. Good one last. Do you really believe goodwill cannot last? As I said, sir, everything decays. If I was to never die, goodness, I would be bored or worse. And I like to be helpful, sir. Quite depressing, wouldn't you say? Yes. <laughs> but the good news is, we'll all die before losing our humanity, sir. No, that's not true. A lot of people already, already lost their humanity a long time ago. So you're ready to die? No, I'm not. I don't fear death, for I won't see it. What troubles me is the pain my death will inflict to those I know. You're a oh. wise man, Mr. Chidana. No, Dr. Reed. I am a foolish man. But I like to think otherwise. Stu's talking riddles and rhymes. So what you're selling? Please show me what you have to sell. Of course. It's just trinkets and curios, really. But I'm sure they can be useful. Okay, with opium, with the rise of epidemic and the rampant shortage of illegal medication, lung diseases and for its sedative and aesthetic properties have recently used opium again. Condian, Condian is a strong and anti drug often used to ease pain or coughing. Do I have money? How much do I have? I have 80, okay. Okay. What is this? Your city needs you. Every life saved by efficient medical aids is a slow struck at the heart of a flu epidemic. Volunteers I'm sorry make you ended up on my plane, Amco. 
cold medical bench, sir. I it's locked, all right. Alright, everybody. If you like this gameplay, hit the like button. If you have any information for me, please let me know in the comments. Until next time, I'm Shadow Samurai. Like Japanese say, Mata Ashita. See you tomorrow. Bye bye.